Hello everyone, this is Domin from Audio Epics. As you can hear from the wonderful reverb here, uh, my studio is not yet installed, but um, that should be amended pretty soon. Um, I've ordered something like a sort of a walk-in closet, um, which I will turn into my new recording studio here in our new place. Anyway, um, it's another beautiful day uh, here in Belgium, and uh, <laughs> um, we're ready for the next part of The Will of the Woods. Last week was episode one, in which, uh, you know, the main characters uh, were introduced. And this time, the story continues with Merilia and Saffredon. So I hope you will enjoy our next trip into the infinite woods with part two of The Will of the Woods. Still just as cold outside. Ooh, close it, Bon. Ah, our dear daughter's here. Morning, Mum. Morning, Dad. Here's your juice. Hungry? <laughs> Go ahead, Mum. What is it? What is what? Come on, you never pamper me like this unless there's something you want to tell me. So just go ahead and tell me. <laughs> well, that's your mother for you. It's just... well... Your father and I both, together as a joint unit, feel we should... warn you, for lack of a better word. We went to the tavern last night and, and, and we met Bore the Lumberjack. Oh? And? He was telling a story of something he'd encountered. It seems the woods aren't safe as they used to be anymore. Not safe? What do you mean? Well, it seems that certain beings, entities, things have been seen. Creatures. Well, or a creature at least. Mm. So what? Do we need to fear other creatures? Or was there something special about this one? Marillia. You know we understand you'll need to wander the woods on your own, but after what we've heard, this thing sounds truly dangerous. It was a... it had a... it was cloaked and hooded. And it had claws, didn't it, Tanner? Yeah, that's what Bo said. Claws like spider legs. So what's wrong with wearing a cloak and claws like spider legs? That sounds a bit over the top. Are you sure Bo wasn't just drunk or something? He didn't look drunk to me, but well, you never know with him, but still. Who knows what evil lurks in the dark? You've heard the story Saffredon told Nus, yes. that he told everyone. Yes, I've heard the stories he told Nuswick, Mum. And Nuswick told them to me. The monster whose body is shadow, the dorsals, the wraith of the black hand. But I don't believe this thing Bo has seen has anything to do with any of those things. We just want to warn you, it's winter, the nights are cold and dark, and you don't know what's to be found in the deep places of the woods. Exactly. So why say it's dangerous when you admit yourself you don't know? It's a creature with claws, Mirelia. Our friends the owls, they have claws too, right? So what? Aren't you afraid at all, Mirelia? I am. Of course I am. But not of this. Just listen to your parents, young lady. Just don't go into the woods on your own at night, all right? All right. All right, I won't. Merilia did intend to keep her promise, but it was very hard for her not to answer the call of the deep woods. Weeks passed, and the winter festival came. It was a joyous night that brought some warmth back to Merilia's heart. Presents were given, and Saffredon entertained the elves of the tree with magic displays that excited everyone, even those old enough to have seen his craft at work many times before. Months passed with Merilia attempting to adjust to a new life, but as the winter came to its end, and the first soft bird songs and timid flowers of spring arrived, she felt something else rise up in her heart, a sense of hope, and with it, a deep desire to go out into the wild and explore. One morning, awakened by the blackbird's song, Merilia came to a decision. 
After breakfast, Baum and Tanner took up their menial tasks of the day. Baum retreated to his workshop to finish a piece of furniture and Tanner continued her knitting. Meanwhile, Mirilia quietly left the mushroom and descended all the way to the roots of the tree to Saffredon's study, who was hard at work writing a book. Just enter, Marulia. There's no need to knock, Marulia. I know when it's you. I can sense it. What's on your mind? Saffredon, I want to ask you a question. There's a novelty. What is it, my dear? Is it always wrong to be disobedient to your parents? That's a very suspicious question, Marulia. What are you up to? Mm. Come on, tell me. Well, they keep saying I shouldn't go into the woods at night anymore. To be honest, I can't disagree with them, Marilia. What do you expect to find there, anyway? Lately, I've been going outside a lot in the evenings, and sometimes it's late when I return. It's just... I want to be outside. I want to be out there. My heart tells me there is something really important for me there. Hmm. And your parents are aware of these feelings of yours? They are. And they don't understand. Not really, anyway. But they let me go about my business. I suppose they've been feeling sorry for me ever since Nuswick disappeared. And why do you think they don't want you to do that anymore? Well, ever since Paul the Lumberjack mentioned he saw something in the forest, you know. Ah, yes. That story. It has reached my ears as well. A black hooded robe and claws. Could be anything, really. Could be dangerous, Marilia. I suppose so. But still, I'm not afraid. Somehow, I feel I don't need to be. Is that strange? Mm. Marilia, sometimes I think you have a special gift. <laughs> a special gift? Me? I don't think so, Saffredon. You should listen to yourself sometimes. You don't even notice the words you use, do you? My heart tells me there is something in the woods. I feel I don't have to be afraid. You simply feel things, Marilia. Things the other elves may not feel. Do you know what I think? What? I think the woods themselves are speaking to you, Marilia. And that is something Balm and Tanner will not be able to understand. <sighs> Saffron, nobody understands the world better than you do. What's the meaning of all this? My dear Marilia... I can never know that. Only you can. I can only surmise that the woods are speaking to you, calling to you, summoning you, and that is something you can't afford to ignore. You're right. I want to see that creature that Boar was talking about. I want to know what it is. It may simply be a traveller from some faraway place. Maybe it has seen Nuswick. The woods are infinite, Marilia. But still... Where Nuswick went is beyond the woods. Wherever this creature may come from, I doubt it is a place where Nuswick has been. And still, I want to know. My whole being tells me that I have to know. But I've made a promise, Aphrodon. I told Mum and Dad that I wouldn't go into the woods alone at night. No need to break that promise, Marilia. If I join you, you won't be alone, now will you? That night, while Balm and Tanner were peacefully asleep in their beds, Marilia gingerly crawled out of her bed and put on a warm cloak. Holding her shoes in her hands, she tiptoed out of the mushroom and into the trunk of the tree. She closed the door as slowly and as quietly as she could. She then quickly put on her shoes and made her way down the stairway. It was unbelievably quiet in the great hall. Somehow, Marilia felt the need to take one last good look at all these familiar surroundings before hurrying down to the roots and opening the heavy door that would lead her out into the cool night. There, on the moss between the giant gnarly roots of the tree, stood Saffredon the Wise. Illuminated by the orangey light of a lantern he bore in his thin hands, his beard waving in the wind. 
Behind him, the woods felt looming and ominous. Smiling warmly, he waited while Mirilia approached him. Well, where do you want to go, Mirilia? I just... I just want to go to the place where Noswick disappeared. It's where I always go, even though the gate is gone. All right. I'll join you, even though I don't know what we will find there. It doesn't matter, really. I just want to go. But you do wish to see this creature? Yes. Somehow I have the impression you want to add a however to that reply. It's nothing. I'm just a little bit afraid now. Seems to be quite normal to me, my child. The woods are deep and dark. Saffredon? Yes? The monster whose body is shadow. Is it real? You young elves. Why do you always bring up your fears when you're already frightened? Well, perhaps because we hope the wise old wizard will tell us there is no need to be afraid. The monster whose body is shadow. Yes. Yes, it is real. And it wanders through the woods, roaming in dark places. Where there is shadow, the monster might appear. <clears throat> well, it's, it's dark now. Where are we, anyway? Near the great fallen tree trunk. Oh. I was there with Nuswick today. You know. I will grant you what you asked, Marilia, but only because it is true. I don't think you need to be afraid of the monster right now. On the whole, it tends to remain close to the Black Rhododendrons. How do you know these things, Saffredon? I learned them from my mentor, and he from his. But some of the elves must have actually seen those places, visited them. Oh, yes. There was a time when we ventured deep into the woods. But those days are long gone now. The elves of yore are lost. The great adventurers who were known around. That was it! That was the creature! Did you see that light, Saffredon? Yes, I did, Marilia. For a moment there, it seemed like a flash of daylight lit up somewhere deeper in the woods. Saffredon, I... I... Marilia! Stay close with me. Stay close, my child. No. I want to go there. I want to go to that place. But, Marilia, you'll have to understand. I'm too old to be crawling over those big roots and branches. Then stay here, please. Wait. I need to see this creature. I thought you were frightened. I am. But still. There. There it is. What? I don't see it. It's standing right in front of you. There in the dark. <gasps> you there, dark creature. What are you doing in these peaceful lands? I want to see it more clearly. Release her from whatever hold you have on her. Foolish old man. I have no hold on her. I cast no spell. She has sought me out. Do not dare to hurt her. Hurt her? Do you also tell the moon not to hurt the sun? Your commands are as meaningless as your threats are hollow. What are you? Now, that is a question worth asking. A question that encapsulates all that I am. My only answer is that I am the question itself. I am... What am I? Saffredon, let me be alone with this creature. I wish to speak with him. Marilia, I can't leave you alone here with this dark being, can I? You said it yourself. You believe in my feelings. And I feel the need to speak with him. Alone. Is it the will speaking to you? Yes. Yes, it is. Very well. I will remain here. 
follow me. Who are you, and why did you seek me out? My name's Marilia, and I'm just curious. I don't believe you. I. Like to know who you are,、hmm. sir. Don't, sir, me, please. I don't know what to call you. Nor do I. I don't have a name, but it's nice to meet you, Marilia. Nice to meet you too.、Uh, what should I call you? Call me Ray. That's what I am, after all. At least I think so. Nice to meet you, Wraith. But you don't seem to be a Wraith to me. Aren't Wraith supposed to be spirit beings? You seem to have a real body, like everyone else. I do have a body, but it is not like yours, Mirilia. I seem to be halfway real. I can touch, but I'm not easily touched by anything. I told you I don't really know what I am. Tell me the truth now. Why do you want to speak with me? Why did you come to this place? Stop answering my questions with more questions. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. Just looking for answers.、Hmm, forgive me. Do go on. Well,、uh, I've lost someone,、hmm. someone I cared about a great deal, more than I realized at the time. And Saffredon, the elderly elf you just saw, he told me that Nuswick, that's the boy I'm looking for.、Well, he told me that he might have gone to some faraway place, and I don't know where you're from. Nuswick. Elf boy, a cheerful face, big wide eyes. No, not seen him. I understand. Well, I suppose I should.、Uh... But please don't leave. Oh no, no, I wasn't going to. Just、uh... maybe you should tell me who you are then. I am a wraith, and a horrid sight to behold. I don't know where I came from, and I don't know where I'm going. I don't know anything. All I know, all I remember, is years and years of wandering, 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 wandering. I know there was pain once, sadness, I think. But even that is lost amidst the shadows, the grey shadows of my past. I wish to pierce those shadows now and find out who I am. So, you're looking for something out here? Yes, yes, like you, I suppose. I, I'm looking. Then maybe we can help each other. You have not even seen my face. Then remove your hood. You humiliate me. No, I just want to see you. Eager to find out how ugly I am. No, I just want to see the person I'm talking to. Then. Look at me. Well, what do you think when you see these sad, sunken eyes, this long, wrinkled face, this dry, pale grey skin, and these few pathetic strands of hair? I've never seen so much sadness. As I thought, the old man will be waiting for you. You should return to him. 
Tomorrow, I will not return. I move on, ever on. I will then, Wraith. Farewell, Mirilia. I notice you're still here. Have you ever heard of Fulton, the mole alchemist? I know nothing, Mirilia. Nothing. I've heard that there's a hole on a day's march from the fallen tree. And that's where Voltum lives. He makes potions of every kind, even memory potions. Memory potions? Yes, he might be able to help you. Maybe you should go there. Hmm. Thank you, Merilia. But I don't know the way. Neither do I. But Saffredon does. The old elf? Yes. Let me ask him. Wait here. Very well. Saffredon? Marilia, what happened? Nothing, as you can see. I had a little chat with the wraith. He's rather kind. Kind? Are you sure? I am. And I... I want to go with him, Saffredon. What are you saying? Marilia? Are you sure you're not under some spell of his? I wouldn't know if I was, would I? What do you think? I suppose you aren't. But I don't know, Marilia. If I let you leave, your parents will never forgive me. But what does your heart tell you about this wraith and me? I cannot deny I feel it too. There is something. A sense of destiny connecting you to him. I even felt it when I first saw him. Perhaps, indeed, it is your fate, and his, to help one another. Even if I cannot see how or why. Then... then we feel the same way. I never knew the Will of the Woods spoke so clearly to you, Marilia. In a way, I can learn from you. Saffredon... I'm... I'm going... I'm going in search of the truth, for him, for myself, and above all, for Nuswick. Yes, this is the path he must take. The will tells me clearly now. But where it will lead you is beyond any wizard's skill to tell. Perhaps you will find answers, or perhaps only danger. But I understand. You must go. You don't have to tell my parents. I will write them something. No, Marilia. I'll tell them. Here, take my lantern. Go. Do not look back. Find the truth. Help that poor creature and bring back Newswick. Farewell. I don't know when. Or if we shall meet again. Farewell, Saffredon. And thank you again for everything. So that was this week's episode of The Will of the Woods. We'll be back next week, I'm afraid still with the same reverb in the background, for more adventures in the infinite woods.